Hey guys, we're coming at you with another uh, video of card show pickups here at the Texas Roadshow. Uh, just want to give you all, all a huge shout out for tuning in. Uh, went to a smaller show uh, in the Dallas area, probably just like 50 or 60 table show. Uh, pretty small show and got recognized by a lot of people. Um, Y'all have done great growing the channel um, and, and reaching out on Instagram and all the comments on YouTube. So First and foremost, I want to thank you all for the awesome support that you all have given us throughout this journey, and hopefully we can reward all that with uh, some good content. So that being said, this is our show pickup from the smaller show uh, in Dallas that we went to over the weekend um, and, and picked up quite a bit of things. Uh, I mean, obviously not quite the haul from like an Allen video, but definitely some decent stuff. So started off, you know, we're going to start off with some Marvel stuff just because I love it. And these are just cards that are so rare. And honestly, I feel like they're just kind of underappreciated in the market right now. Uh, but I mean, look, Spider-Gram, Hollow. You got Wolverine, Hollow. You got, uh, this is Spider-Man and uh, um, Green Goblin. All right, and then we got a Magneto, Hollow, and a Silver Surfer, uh, Hollow. <laughs> Uh, so a bunch of hollows there. I think I paid like, I want to say I paid like $20 for all of these raw. Um, and I don't know if they're in gradable condition. Most hollows aren't, um, just cause like these old 90 holograms that are stickers, um, are very tough grades, but I mean, for like 25 bucks or 20 bucks, it was definitely worth it. So next up. I don't know how much value this card's going to have long term. See the 120 sticker. I think I paid 100 for it. Um, maybe a little less. I don't actually remember. But um, not a huge card. But being from Dallas, definitely had to have a Madonna rookie. This is my first Madonna rookie. Um, PSA 10, obviously. Uh, and like I said, I don't know how much uh, long term growth this has. I think currently he's probably the best American to ever play um, hockey. And obviously, being from Dallas, had to pick pick one up with me being as high on hockey long-term as I am. And this isn't going to surprise you. If you've watched any of our previous videos, older mosaic stuff, we definitely think is going to have a lot of value um, over the long-term uh, growth of the hobby. Just because when you look at the pops on this stuff, they're insanely low um, in comparison to like modern day and current mosaic stuff. Uh, and then this is the blue for Trey Young. Just a great looking card, PSA 10. Another Trey Young coming up. Again, not a super expensive card, but I love the Chinese New Year and the color match that it has. Um, 9.5. And like, look, Trey Young, Chinese New Year, 9.5 with the color match and everything. I paid less than that. I think that was like 120 or something. Uh, maybe closer to 100 even. Like, you can't beat that. I know it wasn't like a steal of a deal based on comps, but it, they're below comps. And like, I don't know. I just feel like you can't go wrong with that card. And with how good Trey Young has been. Next up, this isn't a rookie. Y'all know that I love um, on-card rookie autos from like Hall of Famers and Legends that don't have rookie autos, but this is his. This is Larry Bird's first solo card, the 1981 uh, uh, with an authentic PSA slabbed auto. I'm really high on all these long-term, and then this is Magic Johnson. This one with a PSA 10 auto. Uh, you know, I mean, how can you go wrong with, I mean, I think I got both of these for 400, I think. Um, I think I got both of these for 400. So, I mean, that's, you can't really go wrong with that. And I got another one of these. I think this is like my fourth or fifth um, 2002 SP Authentic Peyton Manning. But with the price that these are, only a few hundred dollars and like on card, Bold blue auto matches the jersey nine five ten, like man, I I just love this card and I love Peyton Manning. I think maybe with the Peyton and Eli thing that they have going on on uh, Monday Night Football, maybe Peyton's Manning Peyton's uh, value starts to get more where it should be with the goats. Uh, and speaking of goats, Dirk nineteen ninety eight finest refractor PSA nine. Um, this is just a card that like I saw it, knew I had to have it. I love Dirk. Being a huge Maverick fan, um, I did get a good deal on it, but um, also just a card that I really 
uh, wanted because of who Dirk is, what he meant to Dallas. Uh, won a championship. And obviously old 90s refractors um, are going to hold a lot of value, um, in my opinion, as time goes on. Uh, picked up another one of these. I think I have like four or five of these now. Uh, but a Steph Curry rookie, anytime I can get a Steph Curry rookie under comps, I'll buy it. And I don't care if it's 90% of comps, 70% of comps, 80% of comps, 95% of comps. Anytime I can get Steph Curry rookie stuff under comps, I'll buy it. Um, I think that long term, he is actually going to be viewed as having more of an impact on the game than LeBron. Uh, and I think that that may be a debate uh, currently going on in the hobby. So let me know down in the comments below. Do you think long term you see Steph Curry having more of an impact um, and changing the game on basketball or LeBron? Really curious to get everyone's opinions on that. And I usually don't buy a lot of baseball um, autograph stuff. Y'all know me. Usually I like the rare parallels and I'm usually drawn to that. But I saw this, had a good deal on it. Um, up until recently, I wasn't the big biggest fan of buying Bryce Harper. I thought Bryce Harper was a really good player um, outside of his one kind of down season that he had. But... Um, I always felt like his value was ahead of where he was as a player, if that makes sense. Like, I always thought that his value was too high for his performance on the field. And I actually think it's flip-flop now. I think his value is low uh, for what his performance is on the field. Um, I mean, you look at the guy who now has two MVPs. Um, I mean, look, his value should be much higher than it is, in my opinion, for a guy that has two MVPs. Aaron Rodgers, 2011 five-star patch auto. Not a rookie, nothing crazy, but 9510 on-card auto patch. I think I got it for like 750. I got it for well below that. Um, and it's number two. So I don't know if I can get the focus, but number to 70. Um, I, I don't know. I just saw the card, kind of fell in love with it, got it for below comps. Um, and as you can see, it's kind of trending here. Um, I'm really liking autos now. Um, a lot of times I'm into parallels and stuff, and I actually did get a couple parallels that you're going to see here in a second. Um, but I just feel like autos like this, especially numbered ones, um, I think this one's out of $2.99, I believe. Yeah, it's numbered out of $2.99. Um, but like a Giannis rookie auto, I think I got this for like under $1,000. I, I did partial trade on it, but I think the value I put on it was like under 1000 and I get that it's an 8.5, but, like, with the auto and just, like, the style of the car, the acetate finishes are always, and dark border backs are always going to get um, lower grades and be a lot tougher to grade. But, I mean, Giannis on-card rookie auto for under $1,000, number to two ninety nine dollars or less, like, I just feel like that's a steal right now. And speaking of steals, let me know what y'all think in the comments about these. I also did partial trade on these, but I'll give you the value that I kind of had in my head when trading for them. It was a 2003 Topps Chrome Reggie Miller Gold Refractor PSA 9, numbered out of 99. And obviously, 2003 is a super expensive product. 2003 Topps Chrome, super expensive. To, to be able to buy that product and then pull a Gold Refractor out of a box is going to cost you... A, unobtainable amount of money for majority of people like those boxes are so expensive and then like you may get lucky and pull a gold on on one in one box but even like not even just a gold a gold of a hall of famer and reggie miller um i just feel like the amount of money you would have to spend in order to get this pool versus the amount of money just buying the card um definitely weighs in its favor and i think i got this at an 800 dollar value in trade um it's not a rookie obviously but a gold refractor out of 99 from 2003 Topps Chrome just seems like an absolute no-brainer long-term. And this was actually my second favorite pickup from the show. It's a 2006 Finest Yao Ming Gold Refractor. Um, this one's numbered out of 50. If I can get it to focus. Yeah. Numbered out of 50. And the PSA 10 is a pop one. And I actually think that Yao Ming stuff over the long term is it actually just going to keep increasing um, with the worldwide factor that he has. Um, I just feel like worldwide he's one of the most popular players of all time. And obviously he was great um, whenever he got to America as well. 
But to get a pop one, I think I got this. Um, I want to say I got it for around like a thousand or twelve hundred dollar trade value. So again, I traded for these, um, and, and there aren't comps. Obviously, this is pop one. I don't know the pop on this, but no comps on it either. Um, I I think overall I got a, a really good steal on those. I'll go through these next since these are not my favorite thing I picked up, but they're obviously one of my favorite. I love Old Wax. Um, this is 2005 rookie debut upper deck football. I think I got both of these for $700. I think I got them for $350 a box. Um, just going to leave those sealed, put them up long term. I don't have a ton of Rogers rookie wax, um, and I'm a huge wax collector in general. Um, and then this is going to be upper deck portraits. Um, it comes with the reason why the box is so high is it comes with a autograph eight by 10 in every box. Um, and I think I got those for seven, seven fifty for both of them. So again, just something I'm going to put away, forget about, leave for the long term. And speaking of that, all that to bring us to this, my favorite pickup from the show. You can see the back side of the slab here. Pause the video. Let me know in the comments what you think it is, but I'll even show you this part of it. And up close, I'll show you this part of it. So let me know what you think it is in the video below. But this is something that um, I've been on for a while. It's beginning to be a lot more popular with a lot of the other um, social media influencers. I know Ryan Johnson, uh, Card Collector 2, and I know Jeff at Sports Card Investor are starting to get on these a lot more. Um, uh, I've been on these for a while, but I think that this is a huge potential long-term value. And it is a signed ticket stub of Larry Bird and the ticket is from his Hall of Fame induction, his Hall of Fame enshrinement in Springfield. And not only that, but PSA 10 on the auto. I mean, just beautiful. Like, I don't know how else to describe this card or, or this, this piece other than, um, you know, for one, you gotta find the ticket, then you gotta get it signed, then it has to be in PSA 10 condition as far as the auto then you have to pay to get it slabbed um like i i just feel like this is an awesome piece to have long term i think that autos in general are going to be something that have a lot of long-term value um uh, at this point uh with all the different parallels and subsets and and uh different things that are coming out in every single product i think that your sps kabooms downtowns uh things like that are still going to have a lot of long-term value just like rare 90s inserts but I think uh, we're to a point now where anything post 2018, you're going to have a lot more value in autographs. Pre 18, you can still do parallels and stuff like that just because of the pop reports. But um, that's it, guys. Let me know in the comments how you think I did on everything. Uh, be sure you are subscribed and checking out all our videos. Be sure you're following us over at IG at Texas Roadshow Shop. We're going to have some huge shop updates coming. Uh, there's a reason we haven't put out a shop video update in a while. Uh, we'll fill you all in on that, uh, as well as all of the shop information coming uh, coming up soon. The next show I think we're going to be at is going to be the Allen Show uh, that I think is like January 15th through 17th. I think that's correct. Uh, so if you see us there, be sure to say hi. Check us out. Take a picture with us. Uh, like I said, we love all the support that we've been getting. Y'all have been awesome. And hopefully we can be equally as awesome in the content that we provide. So if you ever have any content ideas for us, drop those down in the comments as well. Uh, and we will look at doing any type of content that you guys like. But until then, guys, I will catch you in the next one.